Hi there, this is Paul Colmsey here from Seven Sigma. This video comes from to you from New Zealand, where I've been here for a while now running various uh, Power Apps and Flow hackathons uh, for public classes. Now, I was here yesterday in Wellington and it was a Sunday, so um, it was cold and I was sort of doing a bit of cafe surfing and I wrote this app in a couple of hours and I think this app is a good example of what Power Apps and Flow is capable of even now. Uh, for some quite interesting solutions. So I'm going to quickly demonstrate this app and then I'm going to take you through how it was done. So first up, this app allows you to scan invoices. It's kind of like an expense claim app and say you have uh, you have a receipt, you can take a photo of it with your phone, you can scan it, it'll OCR the receipt and it'll make a best guess at trying to work out the price. So let me demonstrate. Firstly, I'm running this on a PC and not an iPad, so when I take a picture, it's not going to use the camera of the device, it's actually going to just select a file. So let me do that. And let me pick a, this receipt here. And so I've got my photo. Now, I am going to click scan and it's going to OCR. Now, I am on dodgy hotel Wi-Fi, so just bear in mind that this will take longer than a typical uh, standard internet connection. So here we go. Okay, and here it goes. So what you can see is down here is the text, the OCR that's come from the, um, it's actually Microsoft's Computer Vision API. And up in here, it's actually shown what it likely thinks are prices. Now we can see here that actually, if you look at the receipt or if you knew the receipt, $36.20 is the actual figure, but when you count for sales tax or GST, it actually came to $38.01. So I'm gonna click this one and it now puts it into here and I'll just clean it up a little bit $38.01 and the description for this one this is taxi fare and I can submit that and so that this is now going into SharePoint and it's going to be tagged that image is going to go to a document library with tagged with the description and the invoice amount Right, now if I change the picture, and if I pick something that, like for example, I was in Sydney recently, uh, here's a picture of the Sydney Opera House, and watch what happens when I scan this picture. And as you can see, it's reporting that no text was found on the image. So just to show you it's not smoke and mirrors, let me grab another receipt, such as this one, completely different receipt. Right, let's scan this one. Now this one's interesting because you can see it's quite clear on the receipt this is an $18 taxi fare. So again, if I choose this one, we will now just clear out some of the excess. That was $18 and this is also a taxi fare. And we'll submit that claim. So I have a document library here called Photos. Here is our invoice. And if you actually have a look, you can see there's the description and there's the actual uh, amount. And by the way, it also captures the GPS coordinates while I was there, but that was related to something else. Okay, now let's have a look at how this was done. Okay, so how did this all work? Well, there's a couple of little bits of trickery, and I'm just going to gloss over this at a high level rather than go into detail in this video. But if you have a look at the data connections in this Power App, we have two data connections. One is called OCR Photo, and one is called Invoice Handler. Both of these are custom data connections. Both of them, though, are actually calling Microsoft Flow workflows. So what we'll do is we'll go and have a look at the Flow workflows first and see what they're doing, and then we'll come back and see how I managed to wire these up into Power Apps. So the first one, let's just look at this OCR flow. If I actually go into edit mode, you can see that what it's actually doing, it's a HTTP request trigger. So this is one of those workflows that is actually treated like a web service. Um, so a, a HTTP request comes in. Our first workflow step is to use the compose action to extract the actual file, the photo, from the HTTP request. Then we are passing this to the Microsoft Vision API and we're actually using the action called the OCR action. And this is an OCR action that actually converts everything into text rather than JSON. So the image source is the image that is um, extracted from this action and um, then sent to OCR. What we then do is that comes back with text 
And the text is is basically every individual word is separated by a new line. And that actually uh, is to our advantage. Okay, so we do a little bit of trickery with a compose function and then we send a HTTP response back. And you can see it here. So we're sending a response back 200, everything's great. And the output here is actually the OCR text just formatted into a little bit of JSON so that um, Power Apps can consume it. So what's the magic that glues this flow to Power Apps? Because right now the only thing that you can see is we have this flow here and we have this custom data connection. So let's have a look. So this is the connect of the OCR file here. Now what I did, rather than edit this one, I basically went through this process. I created a custom connector and I imported an open API file. So what is an open API file? Well, if you do a bit of Googling, this is a file that describes web services. So what's happening in Power Apps? Now if we come back to our function, this is probably the one thing worth mentioning. If you have a look at the scan button, I'm running a function called ocrphoto.postphoto. Where does this post photo come from? Well, if we have a look in this file, if you look, scroll down here a little bit, you can actually see that I have an opera, this, I'm describing a post action and the operation is called post photo, right? And further down, there's a parameter section where I describe all of the things that I need to send to this web service for it to work. And amongst other things, if I go to the bottom, I have one thing called a file, which I say is going to come in form data, and it's going to be of type file. Now don't worry too much about this. This is the thing about OpenAPI. There's a whole standard around how you describe these web services. So now, if you have a look though, you can see that I'm calling the post photo method. I'm passing that image. Okay, and that image then gets passed off to flow. Now also, when this runs, this gets put into a variable, or in this case a collection, called OCR text. So just to demonstrate that, let me quickly run things. I'll scan it again. Okay, the scan has now run. If I stop at this point and go back out into Power Apps, and I have a look in the collections folder, you can see that here is the data that has been returned by the web service and it's been returned into an array called text. There's the text and here's all the actual data. And you can see that same information in this text file because you see that I'm saying um, actually go through the OCR text collection and bring me back the contents of the text property which you're looking at there. So from a flow point of view, if we have a look what actually happened, you can see that here's the HTTP request that came in. The first thing we had to do was use a compose method to extract the file. Now you won't see that here because it's just too large to display. But let's have a look at the OCR method that we then called. This, you can see that the input to this method was the image that came from the previous step. And here is all the text that was detected in the output. So that's come back as raw text. What I then have to do to pass what I then ha what I then have to do to pass it to uh, Power Apps in a meaningful way is I have to convert it back to JSON. So I'm using a compose function, and you can see now it's in JSON. Where there's a JSON array, there's my key text, and there's the actual data coming through. Then I send the HTTP response with that information in the body, and then Power Apps that is basically getting put into the OCR text array. So that's basically how the web service call is done to Microsoft Cognitive Services. At this point, I'm doing, I'm taking advantage of the most recent update to Power Apps, um, a command I've been waiting for for ages. What we have here is a gallery. And if I click on it, here's the gallery. Now if you have a look at the items property of this gallery, I'm using a function called split. So what I'm saying is, please go through the OCR text and anything with a dollar in it I want you to split everything up and I'm also taking advantage of the fact that the text returned from uh, flow which we'll have another look at can you see the little new lines transport backslash n so that has one subtle effect in flow you're only gonna see a single line because I'm actually happy to do that now by doing a split on the text you think about what's happening everywhere it sees a dollar sign okay every dollar sign is now going to be a, a separate uh, entry in this um, gallery. And 
basically when it finds a dollar sign I want to see the thing next to it up until the next carriage return and so this is why you can see here that I have found an 18 because there is a dollar um, uh, there and the other side of that on the left side of that dollar is the word transport so look nothing particularly fancy in fact more trickery than anything else but it turned out that doing the split function on a dollar sign was a really good way of going through all the text in here and coming up with the best guess of things that were related to a price tag then all I've done is whatever one you choose such as this one uh, if you have a look here if I click it do you see how this invoice amount gets uh, placed that's because if you have a look at this invoice amount that is simply saying um, the value of the invoice amount is gallery one dot selected dot result and that is if I click on this one that is currently 18 is selected if I click on this one now the first one is selected and you can see the change so that's really all that was done there when I click submit claim it's then calling one of my other flows which will be the subject of a separate uh, video and that's the one that then posts the file into SharePoint so you can see that this example that I've done actually uses two custom data connections um, I really really wanted to do this natively from Power Apps talking to the Cognitive Services API unfortunately I had trouble sending the file via Power App, so I'll continue to investigate that but in the meantime flow seems to work a lot more reliably so when I have issues connecting Power Apps to custom data sources I tend to use flow instead via a custom connector the one restriction with this is under the free license of uh, Power Apps if you're not using the community plan you can only have one custom connector per user uh, which is actually uh, kind of uh, I, I don't really agree with that approach because I think that at the moment this is a good method to get around uh, not so much restrictions but limitations in what Power Apps can currently do so I think Microsoft need to rethink that because I think they do better and, and encourage more innovation if they allowed people to make multiple data connections particularly when I'm using operations that the base product of Power Apps does not do at this point but apart from that I hope you found that useful I hope that gives you some idea on how this was put together and I'll write a blog post on this in much more detail in the not too distant future thanks a lot bye